if I could ask for uh, Stefan and Alex to join us for uh, a final uh, quick uh, question that I'd like to ask each of you, if you can, if you can give it to me as in as few sentences as possible. Um, I had suggested earlier that uh, this session was perhaps the most most forward thinking. Um, so if I could each ask each of you um, briefly to respond to a question around your vision of where homeopathic research is going. Um, and uh, a short question that, that, that will sort of sum up the day's events for uh, delegates of, of the Congress. Where are we? Where are we going? Um, and perhaps we can start with Leonie and then we'll do Carla and then Stefan and then Alex. So I think that my answer will be the same <laughs> of my colleagues is uh, to understand the mechanism of action of homeopathy. That, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the question. I am right, Stefan. <laughs> That's certainly the question. I agree, but Leonie is first. Hey, 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 Carla is first. <laughs> uh, Carla, do you have a contribution beyond just the the most significant question? Where are we on the on the track? <laughs> Thanks a lot. So, I think we are moving from a very nice way with homeopathic systems, and regarding to the mechanism of action, we have a lot of good results and for sure we need to work hard to better understand the dynamization process. But nowadays we have a very strong methodology to prove the difference regarding to the homeopathic systems and non-dynamized systems. And I think the contribution from Stefan Baumgarten and also from Alex, and if you put together this with the uh, experience that Leonie and me uh, collected in the last years. We have a very nice team to work in this sense because when we have our biological approach and we show this the difference regarding to the mechanism of action and when Stefan and Alex put a very strong uh, statistical analysis and very strong in very important systematic negative control and systematic positive control. So I think we could have a very interesting way in order to prove that the dynamization process really modify the properties of the substances. So I think we need to work together in this sense to put our focus and the importance the importance of to have good uh, control systems in order to prove that the dynamization process really modify the uh, properties of the substance. So I think this is the good way that we are now in this sense. Thank you so much, Carla. Uh, Stefan? Yeah, so uh, to add something to, <laughs> to the topic of mode of action, maybe two points. So first, increased collaboration. So I'm really happy to be here with Carla and Leonie and Alex because I think we, we already had some collaborative pro projects, but I think we will increase that. I think we all agree on that. I'm very happy to be with you here on that podium. So collaboration uh, is, is, is one important word. And maybe just to pick up the question of Robert van Haselen, I think the similar principle should also get into focus because that's completely under under investigated from my point of view. It's not that easy because in, let's say to investigate it, to investigate potentized remedies is, is, is in principle simple, but if you want to investigate the similar principle, you have to, by an empirical approach you, you have to do much more experiments and to investigate a lot a much higher number of samples so that will be a challenge but so just to to add something <laughs> to the mode of action then i would say the similar principle is also an important topic for the future thanks stefan uh, alex uh, your final pearls of wisdom <laughs> wow uh, thanks um well for me i think today and one of the aims for us for today was was really to show that 
homeopathy research can be done. That is, there was uh, for a long time this idea that homeopathy could not be researched by modern means um, and by rigorous analysis and statistics and so on. That it, it, it was somehow ungraspable and beyond. And, and I think today, for me at least, I hope everybody agrees that we have clearly demonstrated that homeopathy can be researched. Not only can it be researched, but it can be researched with very modern and, and state-of-the-art uh, techniques and, and statistics in that the results are positive, uh, of course, and like in any research field, not everything's positive, but that's what we expect from a, from a real research field. Um, and so the, 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 that, they, that that to be having uh, positive results, and now we're really faced with, okay, so a homeopathy kind of, kind of works, uh, so to speak. There's something there, and we, we, our next task is, is on the one hand to, to improve our protocols, to make them faster, better, uh, improve the signal to noise ratio and so on. And, but also, very clearly, we've, we're faced with the huge challenge of, of the mode of action. Um, we have a very little clue as to how it works, and, and, it, and it seems to fly in the face of conventional um, wisdom and, and conventional uh, physical chemistry. Um, and so we need to be creative there and find ways that uh, can accommodate that. But uh, I think um, we're very much more solid grounds to do that, and we have a strong foundation from which to say, look, like, whatever strange theory we have to invent, well, at least the, the, the effects are real and, 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 and are, 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 are solid. So this is, I think, for me, uh, the future. Thank you. Thank you so much for bringing it all together as well, Alex.